The goal of this video is to introduce polar coordinates. So what we should perhaps first do is review Cartesian coordinates. These are probably very familiar to you, but it's worth going through exactly what Cartesian coordinates do for you. Uh, points in the plane are described by a pair of points. You can think of these as being the address of points in the plane. And the first number in this address represents the horizontal displacement, how far to the left or right you go. And the second number represents a vertical displacement. So it's not just distance, it's which direction. So 3 comma 2, point 3 com represented by the coordinates 3 comma 2, is the point obtained by taking three steps to the right and two steps up. The point negative 2, 4 is obtained by taking two steps left of the origin and then four steps up. And the point 1 comma negative 3 is obtained by taking one step to the right and three steps down. So displacement is the right description for what these coordinates are telling you. Now, we could isolate out uh, certain collections of uh, points. So by setting the first coordinate, so-called x-coordinate, equal to a constant, you get a vertical line. Because you're getting the set of points where one coordinate is fixed and then you let the other coordinate roam free. So the vertical displacement, the y-coordinate, uh, could be anything. But you've fixed the first coordinate. So um, x equals k gives you some vertical line. And similarly, y equals k, if you let k be some constant, gives you a horizontal line. So you can think of Cartesian coordinates, at least if you stick to integer coordinates, you can think about laying out streets on a grid in a city. Now, that's not the only way to lay out roads. You could imagine the center of town is important, so you're going to have circular roads all around the center and radial roads going off from the center. And you can still describe where you are in the city by uh, giving two very different kinds of uh, pieces of information. So the first number would be the radial, radial distance away from the origin, and the second number would be a direction. And what we'll do is we'll measure the direction from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise. Um, you'll notice that once you, get, once you sweep that theta coordinate around from 0 to 2 pi, you arrive back to where you started. So there's a little redundancy here. Is, is this direction 0 or is it 2 pi? Well, it's both. As a matter of fact, any theta coordinate is ra it has multiple representations, an infinite number of representations, actually, because you can keep adding an integer multiple of 2 pi to, the, to theta, and you'll get the same direction. So this, this kind of ambiguity is just in the nature of things for polar coordinates. It's something you need to get used to. So let's look at an example. Where is the point 4 comma pi over 3 with these new so-called polar coordinates? Well, r is 4. The distance from the origin is 4, so we're somewhere on this circle. And the direction is pi over 3. So where are we? We have to be right there at that point. That is the point you get using polar coordinates 4 comma pi over 3. So, in polar coordinates, there's, there's, there's not a unique way of describing a point. We've already seen that you could add multiples of 2 pi, integer multiples of 2 pi, to theta and get uh, coordinates for the same point. So let's, let's examine this example a little more closely. So here's that point, and of course, one way to get there is to have theta be pi over 3, and r, the distance from the origin, is 4, so there's a pretty sound way of representing that point. But that is not the only way of doing it. You could imagine going all the way around, so we'll add 2 pi to pi over 3, and get 7 pi over 3, and r is still 2. So that's a second way to do it, and it's, it's a different set of polar coordinates, but it's the same point p is being represented by these two different sets of polar coordinates. And of course that's not all. Um, let's think about going the other way around the circle. You could go backwards. What angle is that? That's pi over 3 minus 2 pi, or negative 5 pi over 3. Once again, you can march out four units. So here's yet another way to describe the same point. These polar coordinates give you the same point. 
and actually we we can actually be a little um, more creative about this what if we point in the opposite direction and instead of marching four units out in this direction we march four units backwards which would uh, sort of naturally be represented by a negative r coordinate so negative four comma four pi over three also gives us the same point p now usually when you go to describe a point, you don't use negative values for the r-coordinate. But we're going to see plenty of situations where you're given a negative r and you need to interpret it appropriately, and so that's the way a negative r should be incorporated into this picture. You march backwards in the direction you're pointing. Now, we've got Cartesian coordinates, we've got polar coordinates, we need to go back and forth, so let's see how that works. Here's a point, polar coordinates r and theta, measuring the distance from the origin and the angle. Then you've got the Cartesian coordinates, measuring horizontal and vertical displacement. How do you bounce back and forth between them? If you know your right triangle trigonometry, you can set up these ratios to give you cosine and sine of theta. And if you solve for x and y, you have nice polar to Cartesian formulas. x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. Beautiful. If you're given r and theta, you can create the Cartesian, you can, you can calculate the Cartesian coordinates quite easily. How about going in the other direction? Well, you've got the Pythagorean formula. It tells you x squared plus y squared is r squared. And you've also got another trig function up your sleeve. Tan theta is the ratio of y to x. So you could try to solve these guys for r and theta, you'd get r equals square root of x squared plus y squared and theta equals the arctan of y over x. But this isn't really the best way to think about these, these, uh, this conversion. Because of the ambiguity we talked about, this is not the only theta that works. And then there's a bigger problem than that, the range of arctan isn't quite big enough to capture all the possibilities. So really, you want to keep your relationship, probably you want to keep your relationship like so. Think of the Cartesian to polar conversion formulas as being r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and tan theta is equal to y over x. This allows for negative r to work. Uh, it, it allows for the ambiguity you want to keep in your mind when you're doing these, when you're working with polar coordinates. So let's look at an example of the, of the conversion formulas in action. Find the Cartesian coordinates for a point whose polar coordinates are 2 comma pi over 5. And the solution here is quite straightforward. Going from polar to Cartesian is rather easy. You just apply these formulas um, and you, you get the following coordinates. So the Cartesian coordinates are approximately so. And here's a fun fact. Pi over 5 happens to be an angle we could find the uh, cosine and sine of exactly. We won't go into that now. But let's, let's try one going the other direction. So find the polar coordinates for a point whose Cartesian coordinates are 5, 3. So what does the solution look like here? We know r squared is going to be the sum of the squares of 5 and 3, and we know tangent theta is going to be 3 over 5. Now, we can just solve for these quite directly. r square root of 34 is about 5.831, and theta is the arctangent of 3 fifths, which is about 0.54. And so there are the polar coordinates. So let's look at another example. What about uh, a point whose Cartesian coordinates are negative 5, negative 2? What are the polar coordinates? So once again, we'll set up these uh, equations for the conversion. And you'll notice the tan theta is 2 fifths. So we could try to apply the arc tangent and we'd get these numbers. But this isn't going to work. There's a real problem here. And this is what the problem is. Here's our point negative 5 comma negative 2 in Cartesian coordinates. Arc tangent of 2 fifths is this angle right here. It's, it's not the right angle. We don't have it. Arc tangent always gives you a value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the direction you get out of applying the arc tangent formula is always going to be either in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. It's, it's got to be stuck to the right of uh, the y-axis. So what we have to do here is actually manually add pi 
to arctangent of two fifths to get the correct angle. Now we've got it. The polar coordinates exactly are square root of 29, comma arctan two fifths plus pi. Approximately they're equal to 5.4 and 3.5. Now there's a sneaky solution which is you, you could have used arctangent of two fifths, but instead of move, moving out square root of 29, you could have moved backwards square root of 29. In other words, you could have used negative root 29. That would have worked also. Now, we sort of frown on this because typically you don't want someone to work hard and go backwards with R. So you want to choose polar coordinates so that R is positive. That's usually what uh, one does in... Uh, polite company mathematically.